Good day, Mr. Eskridge. Good day, sir. What brings you by this fine afternoon? I've come to speak with you, sir. May I have a moment of your time? Why, yes, I do have the time. I must discuss a matter of great importance. I believe you would agree that we each have moments in life where, where we must weigh some options and choose one, presumably the right path. And I propose to you, sir, that that time is upon you now. What are you speaking of? You have been given charge over your stepson's properties and affairs since he laid to rest sweet Jane. And you're also the executor of young Mary Ball's estate, yes? Yes, but what does that have to do with you, sir, and myself in this path business? We're all created with a purpose to fulfill, and we must make choices that lead us to that purpose or further away. And I'm here to advise you to use your influence to guide Augustine to marry Miss Ball, for they too have paths that they need to follow, for if they do not, the consequences are vast and affect so many like ripples sent across the still water. I implore you, sir, it is for their best, truly for each of them. Good evening, Augustine. Plantation looks fine and healthy today. Thank you kindly. Thanks again for tending to my interest in the field. It feels like years since Jane was, since she left us. Yet my pain is as though she was torn from me only yesterday. That's part of why I came to discuss this with you today. Oh. It is time to involve yourself in your properties again. I did plan to discuss the purchase of 600 acres of property adjoining our iron mine. Although your circumstances have changed, I must advise you that it would be in your best interest to marry Mary Ball. She's lovely and it would be of great interest to her as well as to yourself. Marry her? Well, I hardly even know her. I'm just saying, think it over. Consider your months and years ahead. Gus, you must think of your children. She is to take a holiday next month with her brother to London. That would be a perfect opportunity for you to take a trip yourself. And once there, become better acquainted. Washington, stop playing in that hay and come in for supper. Thank you for coming. We've invited you here so we can talk about your nuclear weapons program. As you know, the rest of the world has signed on to a non-proliferation program, and Iran hasn't gotten on board yet. That's what we're here to discuss. Okay, we just want this meeting to go as smoothly as possible. We, we want the overall result of it to be a mutually beneficial agreement between our two sovereign nations. And we're also hoping for a cessation of the hostilities that have plagued both of our people for the past few weeks. All of that needs to end here and now. How's it going, Barry? Hey, Johnny. What's on? Just the news. Representatives at the U.S. Ambassador's Office and the representatives of Iran. It is expected that Iran's recently completed nuclear weapons program will be the topic of discussion. Just a moment. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I've just received word that the Vice President of Iran himself will be present at this meeting. On behalf of all, I would like to wish both parties the best of luck in finding a peaceful and beneficial agreement between Barry, I'm glad I caught you. Listen, I want to give you the chance to come to the meeting tonight. With the Iranians? Yes, with the Iranians. Look, you have great people skills. We could use somebody like you there to help ease the tension. Look, these guys have just been put on a list of countries that are bragging about having WMDs. It'd be great if we could get these guys on our side. You could do that. Uh, thanks. I appreciate the offer. I mean, I'm flattered you've got such faith in my people skills, but I <laughs> really, I, I can't make it. Look, you don't have to decide right here, right now. Just think about it. The train for DC leaves at 6 p.m. If you can make it, be there. I've already saved the spot for you. Look, I won't keep you any longer. Okay. Barry, I hope to see you there. Thanks, Mr. Arkin. I'll consider it. Mr. Freakin. Can I help you? I'm sorry for intruding on you like this, but there's something that you need to know. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I really don't have time for this. If you're selling something, I'm not buying. No, it's not about that at all, Mr. Freakin. Earlier today, you declined an invitation. And I'm here to tell you that it's imperative that you go. Are you spying on me? No, no. No, I just know things. Things that you have to listen to. The key to everything lies within the next few hours, Mr. Freakin, to your salvation. To everyone's. <laughs> Listen, I have had a long, hard day at the end of a long, hard week. I wish I could help you out, but I can't. Look, I'm already overstepping my boundaries here, but you don't know what's at stake. It's imperative that you go to that meeting tonight. Listen, the vice president of Iran is going to be at that meeting tonight. Oh, I know you're a lunatic. The vice president's in London. No, he's not, and he's gonna be at that meeting tonight that's gonna throw your guys off guard. Yeah, I've heard about enough of this. Please, You're Mr. Not... Freakin, please. I'm gonna call the police. Fine, fine, Mr. Freakin. I'll leave, but just know that you hold the whole fate of humanity in those hands, Mr. Freakin. The whole fate of humanity is in those hands right now. Out here. Sorry, Johnny. Uh, there's something I gotta do. Here we Excuse me. Excuse me. The train to DC is it still boarding. No, I just missed it myself. Are there any other trains going to DC tonight? You have to wait till tomorrow. <sighs> Are you okay? I knew a man a hundred years ago who coined the phrase, time heals all wounds. He lied. Destiny is a funny thing. You only have one chance to make the right choice. You only have one key moment in your life to make a difference. I have failed. I hope the powers that created me won't judge me too hard.